Thank you for joining me for another training on measuring grains and ounce equivalents in the child and adult care food program. My name is April Taylor and I'm one of the CACFP nutrition consultants here at the Maine Department of Education. Today we're going to cover what ounce equivalents are and why we switched. We're going to cover your requirements for measuring grains and ounce equivalents. And then we're going to learn more about and actually try the different USDA resources and methods of determining serving sizes of different grains and ounce equivalents using hands-on examples. CACFP had to start using ounce equivalents to measure portion sizes of grains starting last July 1st, 2022. We understand that the timing wasn't great considering we were still kind of in the midst of the worldwide pandemic. However, the implementation of ounce equivalents in CACFP was actually delayed by about three years. Our use of ounce equivalents was supposed to start in 2019, but it was actually delayed multiple times. Ounce equivalents are a unit of measure that tell you the amount of grain in a serving of food. Now, don't let the name confuse you. An ounce and an ounce equivalent are not the same thing. An ounce is a unit of weight equal to 28 grams. But an ounce equivalent is a unit of measure that tells you the amount of grain in a serving of food. In fact, one ounce equivalent is equal to 16 grams of grains. A one ounce equivalent serving of grains does not necessarily weigh one ounce. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the type of grain food that we're talking about, as we'll see in the next slide. The amount of grains contained in different grain foods varies greatly. The grain foods shown on the screen are a great example of this. For example, bread contains mostly flour, and then it usually contains you know, some water, leavening and salt, maybe a little fat, but the majority of the ingredients in bread are grain ingredients. There aren't a lot of non-grain ingredients. But when we look at muffins, of course they contain flour as well, but then they also usually contain you know, sugar, some kind of liquid, eggs, sometimes fruit or other mix-ins, leavenings and other flavorings. They contain a lot more non-grain ingredients. Ounce equivalents take into account the amount of grain ingredients versus non-grain ingredients in different foods. So we know we're always serving participants a specific amount of grains, regardless of the type of food served. And we can see that in the example of our slice of bread versus our muffin. To serve a one ounce equivalent of grains, or 16 grams of grains, we need to serve participants one slice of this bread or one muffin. But the bread only needs to weigh 28 grams versus the muffin that needs to weigh at least 55 grams. The differences in the required weights of the serving sizes of these items is due to the fact that muffins contain so many more non-grain ingredients than breads. Ounce equivalents also take into account the differences in size and shape of different grain foods. Just think about all the different shapes and sizes of different breads and crackers. When we measure serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents, we know that our participants are always getting a specific amount of grain in a serving of food, regardless of how big or small a grain food is, or how a grain food is shaped, or what kind of grain food we're serving. As you may have noticed, ounce equivalent age groups for children are different from the children's age groups listed on the CACFP meal pattern. For ounce equivalents, USDA has combined the one to two year old age group and the three to five year old age group. So there are only two different ounce equivalents age groups for children. There's the one to five year old age group and the six to 18 year old age group. And the ounce equivalent serving sizes for children are the same for both meals and snacks. Children age one to five need to get at least a half ounce equivalent serving of grains at all meals and snacks 
and children aged 6 to 18 need to get at least a one ounce equivalent serving of grains at all meals and snacks. For adult participants, the amounts they need are different for meals and snacks. They need to get at least a two ounce equivalent serving of grains at all meals, but they need to, to only get a one ounce equivalent serving of grains at snack time. Let's take a minute to test our knowledge. So ounce equivalents are a unit of measure that tell you what? Ounce equivalents tell you the amount of grain in a serving of food. Now, who remembers? One ounce equivalent is equal to, what is it? Does anyone remember? 16 grams of grains. That's how many grams of grains that are in a one ounce equivalent serving of grains. And who remembers uh, what the ounce equivalent serving size for grains is for kids age six to 18? It is a one ounce equivalent. They require one ounce equivalent serving of grains at all meals and snacks. All right, so is an ounce equivalent the same thing as an ounce? False. An ounce equivalent is a unit of measure that tells you the amount of grains in a serving of food, while an ounce, again, is a unit of measure equal to 28 grams. So an ounce equivalent serving of bread weighs the same as an ounce equivalent serving of muffins. Is that true or false? That is also false. Because our muffin contains so many more non-grain ingredients, a one ounce equivalent serving of muffins needs to weigh significantly more than a one ounce equivalent serving of bread, which contains mostly grain ingredients. Kids age three to five require the same serving sizes of grains as kids age one to two. Is that true or false? That is true. When it comes to serving sizes of grains, Children between the ages of one through five require the same serving size. So these are the requirements for measuring grains in ounce equivalents. And these requirements are for independent single site center programs, depending of course on what type of CACFP program you operate. So if you're an independent center, you need to be measuring serving sizes of grains in ounce equivalents and of course meeting the meal pattern requirements for the age groups you serve. We need you to start using the meal pattern charts and portion menus that have been revised to include serving sizes of grains in ounce equivalents. Now, of course, if you uh, operate an at-risk after-school program, an emergency shelter, or if um, any family child care providers are watching this, they are not required to complete portion menus. Make sure you're saving your nutrition facts labels and or any recipes for all grains served during the day, just until the end of each operating day. And then you need to provide these labels and or recipes for the day of review to state staff during program reviews. These are the requirements for measuring grains and ounce equivalents for sponsoring organizations. So you, if you're a sponsoring organization, you're making sure that you're training your sponsored centers and providers on using ounce equivalents. Ensure that your sponsored facilities are using meal pattern charts and portion menus that are revised to include serving sizes of grains in ounce equivalents. You need to be using the monitoring forms that have been revised to include ounce equivalents questions and then of course ensuring that your sponsored facilities are measuring portion sizes of grains and ounce equivalents correctly to meet meal pattern requirements. Make sure you're completing those ounce equivalence questions on the monitoring forms and, of course, provide additional training and technical assistance to your sponsored centers and providers as needed. And then these are the requirements for measuring grains and ounce equivalents for family child care providers specifically. So family child care providers need to be measuring serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents and of course meeting meal pattern requirements for the age groups that they serve. 
They need to be using the meal pattern charts that have been revised to include serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents. They need to save their nutrition facts labels and or recipes for all grains served during the day until the very end of each operating day. And then they need to provide those uh, labels and or recipes to their monitors during monitoring visits. So for a quick review, you're required to keep grain labels for three years plus the current year, like all other CACFP paperwork. Is that true or false? That is false. You only have to keep your nutrition facts labels and recipes just until the end of each operating day. Of course, you can keep them longer if that makes sense for your program, but the requirement is to only keep them until the very end of each operating day. So you have to use the meal pattern charts and portion menus if they're applicable to your program that show serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents. Is that true or false? That is true. You do have to use the meal pattern charts and portion menus if they apply to your program that list portion sizes of grains in ounce equivalents. And those forms can be found on the resources page of our website under the heading using ounce equivalents. So sponsoring organizations with multiple center sites and or family child care providers need to make sure that their sponsored facilities know how to measure serving sizes of grains in ounce equivalents correctly. Is that true or false? Again, that is true. Make sure that you're using the new monitoring forms that include those ounce equivalents questions. We have both the on-site and off-site monitoring forms revised to include ounce equivalents questions on the forms page of our website. So depending on the grain that you wanna serve and the method that works best for you and your program, to figure out serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents, you're going to need at least a couple of these resources. We're gonna start by taking a closer look at each of these different resources. First, let's take a look at nutrition facts labels. Nutrition facts labels are a great tool for determining how much to serve in ounce equivalents. As we just talked about, you need to save nutrition facts labels for the grains that you serve during the day until the very end of each operating day. When monitors do monitoring visits of sponsored centers, and when we as state staff do administrative reviews of your program, you'll need to provide these labels for all grain items served during the day of the visit. So these are some examples of nutrition facts labels. The most important information on these labels, when it comes to figuring out serving sizes in ounce equivalents, is the serving size listed on the label. You need to know how many pieces there are in one serving, and you need to know the weight of the serving. In some cases, like the label on the screen for the bagels, the serving size listed will be for just one item or piece. So as we can see, on our label for the bagels, one, bagels, one bagel weighs 95 grams. In other cases, like the tortilla label listed on the screen, there will be more than one item or piece making up a serving. So as we can see on the label for the tortillas, there are two tortillas in one serving, and that serving of tortillas weighs 56 grams. We always want to find out the weight of just one item or piece. So in cases like these, what we need to do is to divide the weight of the serving by the number of items or pieces in the serving. In this case, two tortillas weighs 56 grams. So we divide 56 by two, and we find that one tortilla weighs 28 grams. For single serving packages, it might be harder to find the nutrition facts label. If you can't find a nutrition facts label for these packages, you can likely find the weight of the serving directly on the single package itself, like the examples on the screen. And since they're literally single serving packages, we know that this is the weight of just one serving of the product. 
Next, let's look at recipes. As we just talked about, if you make homemade grains from scratch, you'll need to save your recipes. When it comes to recipes and figuring out the serving size and ounce equivalents, your recipes must include the amounts of creditable grains contained in the recipe, as well as the number of servings the recipe makes. Remember that creditable grains are those that are whole grains, enriched grains, bran or germ. If you're having trouble remembering which grains are whole, which are enriched or bran or germ, USDA's resource titled Identifying Whole Grain Rich Foods for the CACFP has great lists of which grains are whole grain, which grains are enriched, which are bran and germ, as well as which grains are not creditable in case you have questions about whether or not the grains in your recipe are creditable or not. And USDA's resource titled Determining Ounce Equivalents of Grains in CACFP Recipes which we'll cover a little bit later, also has a chart that lists some common grains and it tells you if they're creditable or not. So that's another helpful resource. All right, so here we have a nutrition facts label for some bread. According to the label, how many slices make up one serving of this bread? One serving equals one slice of this bread. And according to the label, how much does one slice of this bread weigh? One slice weighs 43 grams. Here we have a nutrition facts label for some crackers. According to the label, how many crackers make up one serving? In this case, one serving is nine pieces or crackers. So looking at the label, how much does one serving of crackers weigh? In this case, one serving of crackers, which is nine crackers, weighs 30 grams. But now, how much does just one of our crackers weigh? We divide the total weight of one serving by the number of items or pieces in one serving. So in this case, we divide 30 grams by nine crackers and we find out that each of these crackers weighs 3.33 grams. All right, here's another nutrition facts label for a grain product. So according to the label, how many slices or pieces make up one serving of this product? That's a very good question. We cannot tell from this label. I mean, obviously it says that there are 24 servings in the container, but we don't know if there are 24 pieces in the container. Maybe there are 48 pieces or 72 pieces. We, we just don't know. We need more information for this product before we can answer that question. There's not enough information on the nutrition facts label alone. You know, we would need to either open up the package to determine this or at least take a look at the package to maybe find out the answer to this question. So according to the label, how much does one serving of this product weigh? One serving weighs 30 grams. So once we figure out how many items or pieces of this product are in one serving, we'll be able to determine how much just one item or piece weighs. But this label in and of itself does not contain all of the needed information. Let's say that we were looking online for new recipes and we found this one for whole grain blueberry muffins. Does this recipe contain all of the information that we need to determine serving sizes and ounce equivalents? Yes, it does. It lists the amounts of grains in the recipe as well as the number of servings the recipe makes. In this case, the recipe makes 12 muffins. Are all of the grains in this recipe creditable grains? The answer is no. Oat fiber is not a creditable grain ingredient. So we would not use the amount of oat fiber to determine the amount of grains in this recipe. We would just use the amounts of creditable grains which happen to be the white whole wheat flour and the rolled oats. 
Now we're going to take a closer look at USDA's grains measuring charts. USDA's grains measuring charts for the CACFP are fantastic resources that you can use to help you figure out serving sizes of grains in ounce equivalents. USDA created three different grains measuring charts for CACFP. One for children and adults, one for infants, and one for programs that serve single serving sized packages of grains. These charts all list commonly served grain items. They tell you exactly how many ounce equivalents to serve to each age group at each meal and snack. And they tell you the amounts of foods that you need to serve to meet these ounce equivalents requirements. These printed charts are great to hang up in your kitchens and our serving areas for quick and easy reference. One program I've seen uh, highlighted the grain items that they use the most and laminated it as well so that it's easier for kitchen staff to use, which I thought was a fantastic idea. This grains measuring chart is the one for children age 1 through 18, as well as adult participants. This is the grains measuring chart for the CACFP infant meal pattern, which is located in the handout titled Feeding Infants Using Ounce Equivalents in the CACFP. This chart is, of course, for infants that are developmentally ready for grains. And this is the grains measuring chart for single serving packages that can be found in USDA's handout titled Crediting Single Serving Packages of Grains in the CACFP. As the name implies, this chart is for programs that serve prepackaged single serving packages of grain items like those mini bags of pretzels or individually packaged muffins, things like that. All three of these grains measuring charts tell you exactly how many ounce equivalents of grains that you need to serve to the age groups in your care at all meals and snacks. Of course, the meal patterns also tell you this information, but it is handy to have them here as well. And all three of these grains measuring charts also tell you exactly how much of different grain foods you need to serve to meet these ounce equivalents requirements. Remember that all CACFP meal pattern charts, as well as these ounce equivalence charts, tell you the minimum amounts that you need to serve to meet meal pattern requirements. And you can always serve more than the minimum amounts. Except for the chart for single serving packages, notice that these charts tell you the required amounts to serve in two different ways. They tell you the number of items or pieces or volume of the serving size. And the charts also tell you how much a serving size should weigh in grams. When you look at the first column of all three charts, you'll find lists of a variety of commonly served grain items. Notice that some of the grain items have size or weight requirements listed under them. For example, under the graham crackers, it says about five inches by two and a half inches, and under croissants, it says at least 34 grams. To be able to use the corresponding serving sizes on the chart that are listed by item or volume, your grain items must meet or exceed the size or weight requirements listed on the chart for the item that you're serving. On the grains measuring chart, we see that to be able to use the chart to know how many croissants we need to serve, the croissants we have would need to weigh at least 34 grams each. And one way to find out how much one of our croissants weighs is to look at those nutrition facts labels. Nutrition facts labels are especially important for products that have weight requirements to use the chart to find out how many items or pieces to serve. If the product has size requirements, like the graham crackers, we could find out the size of our graham crackers by literally measuring them with a ruler. The grains measuring chart has a ruler included on the back of the handout, as well as other size and shape guidelines to help you measure your grains, although you can always use any ruler you have on hand. 
If a product has no size or weight requirements, then we don't need the label to figure out how much a serving weighs, and we don't need to measure anything. We can just use the chart to determine how much to serve. So remember, if there is a size or weight requirement listed for that grain product, then your grain product needs to meet the requirements to use the serving sizes listed by item or volume. However, if your grain items do not meet the size or weight requirements on the chart, you cannot use the serving sizes by item or volume. However, you can can always use the serving sizes by weight, regardless of the size or shape or weight of any grain product. Let's test our knowledge about the grains measuring charts. So looking at the chart, does bread have any size or weight requirement listed? Yes, it does. One of our slices of bread would need to weigh at least 28 grams to be able to use this chart to determine how many slices of bread to serve. So if my slice of bread weighs 28 grams, how many slices of bread do I need to serve to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size? The answer is a half a slice. So if my bread weighed 30 grams, how many slices of bread would I need to serve to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size? The answer is still a half of a slice. At 30 grams, our, or our bread needs to meet or exceed the weight requirements in the chart to use the chart to find out how many slices to serve. So if my slice of bread weighs 30 grams, then it exceeds the weight requirement, and I can still use the chart to determine how many slices to serve. But what if my bread only weighed 26 grams? How many slices of bread would I need to serve to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size? We don't know from looking at the chart because remember to use the chart to determine how many items or pieces to serve, our slice of bread needs to weigh at least 28 grams. So if our slice of bread only weighed 26 grams, we would need to use a different method to determine how many slices of our bread to serve. Let's say I want to serve saltine crackers. So looking at the chart, do saltine crackers have any size or weight requirement listed? Yes, they do. The size requirement listed for saltine crackers is about two inches by two inches. So if my crackers did measure about two inches by two inches, how many crackers do I need to serve to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size? The answer is four crackers. So if my crackers measured about two and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches, how many crackers would I need to serve to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size? I could still serve four crackers, because our crackers need to meet or exceed the requirements listed in the chart to figure out how many crackers to serve. Now, what if my crackers measured about one and a half inches by one and a half inches? How many crackers would I need to serve to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size? The answer is we don't know from looking at this chart because to use the chart to determine how many items or pieces to serve, our crackers need to meet the size requirements listed on the chart, and ours are only half, about half the size. So we would need to use a different method to determine how many of our crackers to serve. Similar to the other grains measuring charts, when it comes to single serving packages of grains, your packages must meet or exceed the weight requirements listed in the first column to be able to use the chart to determine how many packages to serve. If they meet or exceed the weight requirements, then you can use the chart to determine how many packages to serve. And remember, with single serving size packages, the weight of the package might be directly on the front of the single serving package itself, or it could be on the nutrition facts label. 
So just a few more things I want to mention about the items on the grains measuring charts. Make sure to find the item on the charts that best matches or fits the description of the grain item that you have. For example, the chart for kids and adults lists a few different kinds of ready to eat cereals. There's flakes or rounds, granola, and puffed cereal. Cereal flakes or rounds include cereals like Chex and Life. Puffed cereals include cereals like Kix and Rice Krispies. It also lists several different kinds of sweet and savory crackers, including animal crackers, bear-shaped crackers, square cheese crackers, fish-shaped crackers, and many more. Also notice that corn muffins are listed separately from all other muffins, and their weight requirement is also different from other muffins. Another resource that would be super helpful, but it's not required for determining serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents, is a kitchen scale. If you use a kitchen scale, it will be most helpful to buy one that measures weight in grams, since that's the unit of weight mentioned in all of USTA's handouts and resources. For anyone that might be new to using kitchen scales, it's good to know how to tear or zero out a scale, especially if you're measuring out ingredients that could easily spill out over the sides of the scale, you know, like little fish crackers or those Teddy Graham crackers. Of course, this isn't needed for bigger products like a piece of bread that won't roll off the scale, but for weighing out other products that might slide or roll off, it's just super handy to measure them out onto a plate or a bowl or some other kind of container on the scale rather than trying to keep them on top of the scale itself. And of course, you know, it's also good for food safety and keeps the scale a lot cleaner when you measure products out into a bowl or container rather than right onto the scale itself. Now that we've taken a look at some of the tools and resources that you can use to figure out serving sizes and ounce equivalents, let's take a look at how we actually figure out the serving sizes. There are a few different methods that you can use to figure out the serving sizes of grains and ounce equivalents. And you know, it can seem a little bit overwhelming at first, but it's actually a really good thing that there's different methods because one, you know, different people like doing things in different ways. And two, there are a huge variety of grain products that you can serve through CACFP. One method that you can use to determine the serving size of a grain product is to use the product information on the nutrition facts label and compare that to the information for the specific type of grain product on the appropriate grains measuring chart. Let's say that we want to serve regular full-size bagels for breakfast and we're serving kids between the ages of one and five. Of course, we first need to know what the minimum required serving size is for kids in these age groups. We know from looking at the meal pattern chart for kids ages one through five, and from looking at the top of the grains measuring charts for children and adults, that kids age one through five must get at least a half ounce equivalent serving of grains at all meals and snacks. Next, we look up on the chart to find the specific type of product we wanna serve. Notice that the chart lists two kinds of bagels regular bagels and mini bagels. So we're going to look at the row for regular size bagels since that's what we bought at the store. When we find regular size bagels, we see that they have to weigh a certain amount to be able to find out how many bagels to serve. Our bagels need to weigh at least 56 grams to be able to use the chart to find out how many bagels to serve. The next step is to look at the nutrition facts label on our bagels to find out if they meet the weight requirements listed on the chart. And we see that one of our bagels does indeed weigh at least 56 grams. It actually exceeds the weight, which is fine as well. Remember that our products need to weigh at least as much or more 
and the weight listed in the chart to be able to use the chart to find out how many bagels to serve. So now that we know our bagels meet the weight requirement, we can look back at the chart to find out how many bagels we need to serve. And we find out that we need to serve at least a quarter of a bagel to kids age one through five to meet a half ounce equivalent grade requirement. So could we serve more than a quarter of a bagel and meet meal pattern requirements? The answer is yes. Remember, you can always serve more than the minimum required amount. Now we're going to try <clears throat> using the nutrition facts labels and grain me grains measuring charts to figure out the serving sizes for some more real life examples. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say that I found on a sale on Kix breakfast cereal and I'm serving it at breakfast to kids between the ages of two and eight. I know that I need to serve at least a half ounce equivalent serving to my kids between the ages of two and five, and at least a one ounce equivalent serving to my kids age six to eight. I have my grains measuring chart for children and adults handy, and I have my nutrition facts label. The first step is to find kick cereal on the grains measuring chart. Remember that there are a few different kinds of ready to eat cereal on this chart, so I need to make sure that I find the breakfast cereal that most closely matches mine. Kix is considered a puffed cereal since it's so light and airy, so we need to look at the option for puffed cereal. Looking at puffed cereal on the chart, we see that it has no size or weight requirements. Because the product has no size or weight requirements, we don't actually need to look at the nutrition facts panel to to determine how much a serving weighs. And we don't need to measure anything. We can literally just look at the chart to determine how much to serve. When we look at the chart, we see that we need to serve three quarters of a cup of kick cereal to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size, and one and a quarter cups of kicks to serve a one ounce equivalent serving size. Here we have a nutrition facts label for single serving sized packages of corn muffins. So I've got my grains measuring chart for single serving packages of grains handy. Remember that corn muffins are listed separately from other kinds of muffins on the grains measuring chart and their weight requirement is different as well. Looking at the chart, we see that corn muffins have to weigh at least 34 grams or 1.2 ounces to be able to use the chart to figure out how many packages or muffins to serve. When we look at our nutrition facts label to see how much our corn muffins weigh, we see that they exceed the weight requirement and each one weighs 51 grams. Our products need to meet or exceed the size or weight requirements listed on the chart and ours do. So we can use the chart to figure out how many packages, or again in this case, how many muffins to serve. We see that we need to serve a half a package or half a muffin to serve a half ounce equivalent serving size, one package or one muffin to serve a one ounce equivalent serving size, and two packages or two muffins to serve two, a two ounce equivalent serving of grains. Let's take a look at Ritz crackers. There are several types of crackers listed on the grains measuring chart so make sure that you're looking at the description that most closely matches the crackers that you want to serve. In the case of Ritz crackers, they're in the cracker category called cracker round savory. And we see that they need to meet size requirements to be able to use the chart to figure out how many of these crackers to serve. Our Ritz crackers need to be one and three quarter inches across to be able to use the chart to know how many crackers to serve. Now again, you could use any regular ruler to measure your crackers, or the grains measuring chart also has measuring guides on the last page of the resource so that we can ensure that our crackers meet the size requirements to use the chart for the number of pieces or crackers to serve. 
Once we've measured our crackers and confirmed that they do meet the size requirements, then we can see that we need to serve four crackers for a half ounce equivalent serving size, seven crackers for a one ounce equivalent serving size, and 14 crackers for a two ounce equivalent serving size. In our last example, <clears throat> we have some Eggo waffles that we wanna serve for breakfast. As we can see on the chart, waffles need to weigh at least 34 grams each to be able to use the chart to determine how many waffles to serve. So next we need to look at our nutrition facts label to figure out how much our waffles weigh. Looking at the label, we see that <clears throat> the serving size listed on the label is two waffles and two of our waffles weighs 70 grams. We need to find out how much just one of our waffles weighs. So we'll divide the total weight of the serving size by the number of items or pieces, and we find that one waffle weighs 35 grams. Since we've not only met but exceeded the required weight for waffles, we know that we can use the chart to determine how many waffles to serve. And we see that we need to serve a half of a waffle to equal a half ounce equivalent serving size, one waffle to equal a one ounce equivalent serving size, and two waffles to equal a two ounce equivalent serving size. Another method you can use to determine the serving size of a grain product is to use a kitchen scale and compare the weight of your grain product to the serving size information listed by weight or the specific type of grain product on the grains measuring chart. This method works for any grain product, including products that don't meet the size or weight requirements listed in the grains measuring chart. Let's say you bought some of these dog bone shaped crackers that you wanna serve. When you look for graham crackers on the chart, you see that there are two different listings for graham crackers. One for those little bear shaped um, sweet graham crackers and one for the bigger graham cracker sheets. Both types of graham crackers listed on the chart have size requirements, but our dog bone shaped crackers don't fit into either of these size requirements. In cases like this, you actually have two options. You could use the information on the nutrition facts panel and do some math to figure out the serving size, or you could use a kitchen scale to figure out how much of these crackers to serve an ounce equivalents by using the serving size weights listed in the chart. Most people I've talked to don't love doing a lot of math, so today we're just gonna focus on using the kitchen scale method. So again, we've seen that the grains measuring charts list the serving sizes two different ways, by item or piece, and by weight. As we talked about, to use the serving sizes by item or piece, our product needs to meet the size or weight requirements listed in the first column of the chart. However, we can always use the serving size by weight listed in the chart regardless of whether or not a product meets the size or weight requirements listed. Looking at the chart, we see that you know, regardless of the size of our graham crackers, whether they're five inches by two inches or one inches by or one inch by one inch, a half ounce equivalent serving size of graham crackers weighs at least 14 grams. A one ounce equivalent serving of graham crackers weighs at least 28 grams. And a two ounce equivalent serving of graham crackers weighs at least 56 grams. So in cases where your grain product doesn't meet the size or weight requirements listed in the charts, or if you're just a super hands-on person that loves to use your kitchen scale for all grain products, you can literally just get out your kitchen scale and weigh out enough of the grain product to meet the serving size weights listed in the chart. An additional resource that I wanna mention is located in USDA's handout titled, Calculating Ounce Equivalents of Grains in the CACFP. In this handout, there is a grains ounce equivalents chart. 
This grains ounce equivalents chart lists the serving size weights for different ounce equivalent serving sizes of much more general categories of grain products. So this grains ounce equivalents chart is another handy resource for grain products, including those that don't quite meet the descriptions or size or weight requirements listed in the first column of the grains measuring chart. As you can see, unlike the grains measuring charts we've been using so far, this particular chart lists very general categories of grain products and has no size or weight requirements to be able to use the chart. For example, on this chart, crackers are broken down into just two categories, savory crackers and sweet crackers. So if you find a sweet graham or animal cracker that you wanna serve, you know, that doesn't match the descriptions and or size requirements to use the regular grains measuring charts. Similar to the dog bone shaped graham crackers we just looked at in the previous slides, we can refer to the serving size weights listed in this chart for sweet crackers. Just like we saw on the grains measuring charts for graham crackers, a one ounce equivalent serving of graham crackers, which are considered sweet crackers, weighs 28 grams. Another cool thing about this chart is that it lists ounce equivalent serving sizes that aren't listed on the grains measuring charts. In addition to the half ounce equivalent, one ounce equivalent, and two ounce equivalent serving sizes that we're familiar with from the regular grains measuring charts, this chart also lists the required weights for a quarter quarter ounce equivalent serving size and a three quarter ounce equivalent serving size. If you do use a kitchen scale to determine serving sizes of grains, I recommend that <clears throat> once you've weighed out your portion size, in our previous example, the 28 grams of crackers, you'll transfer that portion to a measuring cup to more easily and efficiently measure out the rest of the servings you need for the rest of your participants. Or if the size and shape of the product wouldn't fit well in a measuring cup, then document the number of pieces in that 28 gram serving. Either way you do it, write that information down so that the next time you serve that specific brand and type of grain product, you'll have the serving size information right at your fingertips and you won't have to go through this whole process every time. Let's say that you want to serve these mini club crackers or oyster crackers. Neither of these crackers meet any of the descriptions or size requirements for any crackers listed on the regular grains measuring charts. <clears throat> so we can't use these resources to figure out how much to serve. However, we can use the serving sizes on this grains ounce equivalence chart for the general category of savory crackers to figure out the serving size we need. Looking at the grains ounce equivalence chart, we see that a half ounce equivalent serving size of savory crackers weighs 11 grams. So if we needed to serve a half ounce equivalent serving of grains, we could simply weigh out 11 grams of our crackers to meet the requirement. If we needed a one ounce equivalent serving of grains, then we would weigh out 22 grams worth of crackers. Again, I personally would transfer the serving to a measuring cup so that I could more quickly and easily measure out the total number of servings that I need. Another method you can use to determine the serving sizes of a grain product, for those of you who might be tech savvy, is to use USDA's online Exhibit A grains tool. USDA's online Exhibit A grains tool is part of USDA's food buying guide and is a helpful resource that anyone can access on their computer or on their smartphone. It can tell you different ounce of equivalent information for any grain product, including how many ounce equivalents are in a serving of your grain, as well as how much of your grain you need to serve to meet ounce equivalence requirements for different age groups at different meals and snacks. 
Just like using a scale, <clears throat> the serving size weights listed on the grains measuring charts and grains ounce equivalence chart. This is another tool that you can always use for any type of grain product to find out how much to serve in ounce equivalents. <clears throat> You can download the app for USDA's Food Buying Guide for Child Nutrition Programs. When you open the app on your phone, you'll see the screen on your left. <clears throat> click on the icon for more, and then click on the option for the Exhibit A Grains tool. To use the online Exhibit A Grains tool, you'll enter information from a grain food's nutrition facts label into the tool, and then it does all the math for you. From the nutrition facts label, you'll be entering the number of items or pieces or slices that make up a serving, as well as the weight of the serving, to find out how much of the item to serve. In the example shown on the screen, we want to find out how many of our crackers to serve to make a one ounce equivalent. So we first choose serving sizes in ounce equivalents and we entered a desired grains contribution of one ounce equivalent. Next, we look at the crackers nutrition facts label and enter the number of crackers in one serving, which is 27, as well as the weight of one serving, which is 30 grams. The tool then tells us that we need to serve 20 pieces, or in this case, 20 crackers, to serve a one ounce equivalent serving of grains. Now let's take a look at what the Exhibit A Grains tool looks like when you use it on your computer. When you go onto the Food Buying Guide website, you'll first click on the option for the Exhibit A Grains tool. Next, you'll click on the green rectangle in the lower left of your screen to enter the Exhibit A grain product that you're searching for. Now, if you forget how to use this tool, there are instructions right at the top that you can always refer to. And if you create a profile, you can enter the brand and product name in box one so that you can save your results results and access them again later. But this step is totally optional. Next, in box two, you'll choose the method that you want your measurements in. In this case, we want ounce equivalents, not servings. And then in box three, you'll type in the general type of grain product that you want to serve and click on the search button you'll get the best results if you use the keywords that USDA uses for grain products on their regular Exhibit A grains chart, which we have included in the resources on our website. You'll also get the best results if you type in very, very general search terms. For example, um, terms just like, like bread, crackers, muffins, the simpler the better. For example, when I type in crackers, the tool knows that there are two USDA categories of crackers. There are savory crackers and sweet crackers, so it's asking me what kind of crackers I want. Choose the type of cracker that you have and want more information about by clicking the Add button. Similarly, when I type in bread, the tool gives me a bunch of different choices for bread products as they appear on the Exhibit A grains chart. It gives me the choice of hard bread sticks, bread coating, regular bread, cornbread, pita bread, pizza crust, and stuffing. In this case, I'm trying to find out about sliced bread, so I would click on the Add button for breads all, for example, sliced French Italian. Once you click add, this screen will automatically appear underneath. This is where you tell the tool what specific information you're looking for. If you click on the tab titled grains contribution, 
you'll find out how many ounce equivalents there are in one serving of your food as shown on the nutrition facts label. If you click on the amount to serve tab, you can find out how much of the food you need to serve to make up a quarter ounce equivalent, a half ounce equivalent, a one ounce equivalent, or whatever quantity of ounce equivalents you're looking for. And if you click on the amount to serve by age group grade group tab, then you can find out how much to serve to all CACFP age groups at a specific meal service. To find out serving size information for this product, all you need to do is enter the serving size information from the product's nutrition facts label. You'll enter both the unit of the serving size, such as one piece or one slice, as well as the weight of the serving. In this example, the measurement unit of the serving size is one slice, and the weight of one slice is 25 grams. On the tab for grains contribution, you enter the weight of one serving of the product and the unit of measure. In this case, one serving of our bread again is one slice and one slice weighs 25 grams. Once you enter that information, the tool tells us the number of ounce equivalents in one serving of the product. In this case, one slice of our bread provides a three quarter ounce equivalent of grains. On the tab for amount to serve, you enter how many ounce equivalents you want to serve in box six, and then you enter the serving size and weight from your nutrition facts label in box seven. And the tool tells you how much you need to serve. In this case, I told the tool that I wanted to serve a one ounce equivalent, and then I enter the information from the nutrition facts label. I told the tool that a serving of my bread is one slice and that one slice weighs 25 grams. The tool told me that I need to serve one and a quarter slices of bread to equal a one ounce equivalent. Lastly, on the tab for amount to serve by age group grade group, I can find out how much of my product I need to serve to each age group at a particular meal or snack service. Just like before, I enter the information from my product's nutrition facts label on line six, and then I enter the meal service that I want on line seven. The tool then tells me how much I need to serve to every age group. In this case, I ask the tool to tell me how much I would need to serve to each age group at lunch or supper, and the tool told me that I need to serve at least three quarters of a slice of my bread to kids age one through five, I need to serve at least one and a quarter slices to kids age six through 18. And I need to serve at least two and a quarter slices to adults. Besides the instructions that are included with the tool, USDA has a training video on how to use the Exhibit A Grains tool as well. You can find it under the help section of the online food buying guide. In addition, the Exhibit A Grains Tool to the Rescue webinar recording gives more details on how to use this tool. This recording is available at the web address you see on the screen, and we've posted a link to the webinar on our main CACFP website with the other ounce equivalents resources. Another method you can use to determine the serving size of a grain product is by using the CN label or product formulation statement for products that have them available. CN labels and product formulation statements are required for crediting commercially produced mixed component foods like chicken nuggets, lasagna, meatballs, and fully cooked sausage because, you know, since we didn't make these products ourselves, we have no idea how much of each ingredient is in these foods. Here is a CN label for turkey corn dogs, you know, so they contain both a meat meat alternate component, the turkey hot dog, and a grain component, the cornbread wrapping. We don't know how much meat or grains is in these since we didn't make them ourselves, but the CN label information tells us that a serving of this product contains two ounces of meat meat alternate and two ounce equivalents of grains. So the man manufacturer has done 
all of the hard work for us. These labels are most often found from products that you buy from food service supply companies like Cisco, PFG North Center, and Dennis Paper, but they can be much more difficult to find for products found in regular grocery stores. USDA does keep an updated national list of CN labeled products that you can access by clicking the link on the screen. Since this is a national list, you most likely won't be able to find all of the products on the list here in Maine, but it can be really helpful for finding CN label products that are available. This is an example of what a product formulation statement looks like. As you can see, it looks a lot different from a CN label, but it still tells you how that commercial food credits toward meal pattern requirements. In this case, the crediting information is down toward the bottom, and it tells us that a 1.75 ounce portion of this product, which happens to be pancakes, provides a one and a half ounce equivalent serving of grains. Now we're gonna take a look at how to determine ounce equivalent serving sizes of homemade grains. Similar to how there are different ways to determine ounce equivalent serving sizes of commercial grain products, when it comes to figuring out serving sizes for homemade grains, there are also different methods you can use. When it comes to homemade grains, there are two different methods you can use. You can use the method described in the USDA handout on the screen, or you can use a kitchen scale. Today, we're gonna to go over each of these methods. But first, let's take a look at the method described in USDA's handout titled, Determining Ounce Equivalence of Grains in CACFP Recipes. The method in this handout involves completing the homemade grains worksheet to determine the amount of creditable grains in your recipe, and then calculating the amount of creditable grains per serving. So it does involve doing a bit of math. To use this method, you'll be filling out the homemade grains worksheet. To use the worksheet, you first need to identify each creditable grain ingredient in your recipe. Remember, creditable grains include whole grains, enriched grains, bran, and germ. If there are any grain ingredients in your recipe that are not creditable, then do not include them in the homemade grains worksheet. In the case of this pizza crust recipe, enriched bread flour and whole wheat flour are both creditable grain ingredients. Remember, this handout also includes a list of some commonly used creditable and non-creditable grains for your convenience. So to use the homemade grains worksheet in the handout, we're gonna start by writing the name of the recipe on the line after homemade grains worksheet. Next, you'll list each of creditable grain ingredient in your recipe. Remember, we're only gonna list the creditable grains on the worksheet. If an ingredient in your recipe is not creditable, then do not include it in your calculations. The next step is to list the amount of each creditable grain ingredient in the recipe. If the amounts are listed in fractions, you'll need to convert the amounts from fractions to decimals just to make the math easier. There's a handy conversion chart right in the handout for doing this. As you can see in the example, they converted three and a quarter cups enriched bread flour to 3.25 cups and three and a half cups of whole wheat flour to 3.5 cups. Next, we need to convert the amounts of our creditable grain ingredients to amounts in grams. If you already happen to know the amount of your ingredients in grams, then you could skip this step. But if the amount of your grain ingredients are listed in cups, ounces, or pounds, then you'll need to convert them. This handout includes a grains conversion chart on page five for commonly used grain ingredients. You'll look up your grain ingredient, the grain ingredients in your recipe, and then you're gonna enter the corresponding conversion factor. 
Next, we'll multiply the amount of our ingredients in cups by the conversion factor to get the amount of our ingredients in grams. Alternatively, if you have a scale that measures weight in grams, you could just weigh your ingredients and enter the weights here. Next, we'll add up all of the grams of creditable grain ingredients to determine the total grams of creditable grains in our recipe. Next, we're gonna take the total number of grams of creditable grains in the recipe, and we're gonna divide it by the number of servings the recipe yields. This will tell us the amount of creditable grains per serving. Lastly, we need to determine how many ounce equivalents of grains there are in each serving of our pizza crust. So from that last step, we learned that there were 34.61 grams of creditable grains per serving of pizza crust. So now we need to divide the number of grams of creditable grains per serving by 16 grams. As you'll remember from the beginning of today's presentation, one ounce equivalent is equal to 16 grams of grains. So dividing by 16 grams will tell us how many ounce equivalents of grains there are in each serving. When we do the math, we find that there are 2.16 ounce equivalents of grains in each serving of our pizza crust. So the very, very last step is to round down if your number ends in a decimal. If your number ends in a decimal, you'll round down that number to the nearest quarter ounce equivalent of grains. So we'll round down 2.16 ounce equivalents down to just two ounce equivalents. And we find that one serving of our pizza crust equals a two ounce equivalent serving of grains. <clears throat> so let's try the homemade grains worksheet for a different recipe. I was looking online and I found this whole grain pancake recipe that I wanna try in my program. The first step to figuring out the serving sizes in ounce equivalents is to identify the grains in our recipe and figure out if they are all creditable, since we can only use creditable grains in this process. The grains in this recipe are the first four ingredients, whole wheat flour, enriched all-purpose flour, whole grain cornmeal, and rolled oats. To find out which grains in our recipe are creditable, we can refer to the chart on page five of USTA's handout. The chart on this, in this handout tells you whether or not different grains are creditable. When we look at the chart, we find that whole wheat flour, enriched all-purpose flour, whole grain cornmeal, and rolled oats are all creditable. So we know that we can use all of these ingredients in our calculations, and we can write down these four grain ingredients on our worksheet. Next, we need to convert any fractions to decimals to make the math e easier. So we'll convert 3 quarters of a cup all-purpose flour to 0.75, a half a cup cornmeal to 0.5, and a quarter cup rolled oats to 0.25. Remember that there's a handy conversion chart in the handout if you need it. Then you'll enter the amounts of each creditable grain ingredient into the chart. So this is what our worksheet looks like so far. So we've entered the name of our recipe, all the creditable grain ingredients, and the amounts of each creditable grain ingredient in decimals. The next step is to determine the amounts of creditable grain ingredients in grams. If your recipe already lists your grain ingredients in grams, again, we could skip this step but our recipe lists our grain ingredients in cups. So we need to find those conversion factors. So we'll look on the same chart on page five of the handout, and we'll look at that last column to find the corresponding conversion factor for each grain ingredient. And then we'll enter those conversion factors into the chart. So here we've entered the conversion factors into the chart. Next, we need to multiply the amounts in cups 
by the conversion factor in grams to get the amounts of each ingredient in grams. Next, we'll add up all of the amounts of creditable grains in grams to get the total amount of creditable grains in grams. And we find that we have a total of 295 grams of creditable grains in our recipe. Next, we'll divide the total grams of creditable grains in the recipe by the number of servings the recipe makes. From the last slide, we found that we have a total of 295 grams of creditable grains. So we divide that by 10 servings, and we find that we have 29.5 grams of grains per serving. Next, we'll divide the grams of creditable grains per serving by 16 grams. Again, we do this because one ounce equivalent is equal to 16 grams of grains, so dividing by 16 grams tells us how many ounce equivalents of grains there are in each serving. So in the last slide, we found that there are 29.5 grams of grains in each serving or pancake. We'll divide 29.5 grams by 16 grams and we get 1.84 ounce equivalents of grains per serving. The very last step is to round down if the answer you get ends in a decimal. So we need to round down to the nearest 0.25 ounce equivalents of grains, and we find that each pancake provides a 1.75 ounce equivalent of grains. You know, now, depending on the ages of your participants, how many ounce equivalents you need to provide, and how hungry your participants are, you could make twice as many pancakes from this recipe, you know, or cut them in half and still meet meal pattern requirements if you only needed to provide a half ounce equivalent serving of grains. If you don't like that method for determining ounce equivalents of homemade grains, you have another option that you can use to determine the serving sizes of homemade grain items, which is simply to weigh your homemade grain item and then use either the grains measuring charts or grains ounce equivalents chart or the online Exhibit A grains tool to figure out the serving size. Once you know the average weight of one of your homemade grain items, such as homemade pancakes, you could compare the average weight of your pancake to the serving size weights for pancakes listed in USDA's grains measuring charts or the grains ounce equivalents chart. According to the charts, a half ounce equivalent serving size of pancakes weighs at least 17 grams, and a one ounce equivalent serving size of pancakes weighs at least 34 grams. So let's say we made some homemade pancakes and we weigh our pancakes and find that the average weight is 20 grams each. At 20 grams each, our pancakes weigh enough to provide a one half ounce equivalent serving of grains. If you wanted to serve a one ounce equivalent serving of grains, you could serve two of these pancakes because you're not only meeting, but you're exceeding the required weight of 34 grams. Another option you have is you could take the weight of your homemade pancake and enter it into the online Exhibit A grains tool like we did before. So I first told the tool to look at pancakes and then I clicked on the option to tell me how much to serve by age group. When I entered into the tool that one piece or one pancake weighs 20 grams and that I want to find out um, the serving sizes for CACFP breakfast. The tool told me that it takes one piece or one pancake to equal a one half ounce equivalent and 1.75 pancakes to make a one ounce equivalent. Now in reality, you're probably not gonna cut up your pancakes so that each person gets one and three quarter pancakes, right? But just remember this tool is doing the math for you and it's super accurate, which is why it sometimes will show you amounts that really aren't the most practical in reality. But of course, as we know, we can always serve more than the minimum required serving size.
So as we just saw, there are a few different ways to determine serving sizes of homemade grain items. You know, I would recommend that you practice the different methods and find the method or methods that work best for you, your program, and your staff. You know, we do know that using ounce equivalents has been a little overwhelming with everything else you have on your plates, but we really believe that with a little bit of practice, this is going to become second nature to you all before too long. You know, please practice the different methods and figure out which ones work best for you and your staff. You know, you may find that you like to use one method for certain products and a different method for other products. Try to keep an open mind as you try these different methods. You know, as I've mentioned, I'm not always the biggest fan of technology, but I've discovered that the online Exhibit A Grains tool really is a great resource for anyone who doesn't like doing a lot of math. You know, it just took me a little bit of practice to get used to it and feel comfortable with it. If you're able to afford to buy a kitchen scale, I would definitely recommend doing so especially if you and your staff prefer a more hands-on approach to determining serving sizes, or if you make a lot of homemade grain items. You know, keep these USDA charts and resources handy in your kitchen and serving areas so that you can refer to them often. Uh, we recommend creating your own list of products with their ounce equivalent serving size information. You know, if you've measured or weighed out a specific product to determine the serving size and ounce equivalents, write that serving size information down so you have it on hand the next time you're shopping or planning menus or serving that product. I would do this for both commercial items as well as homemade grain products to save yourself time and energy moving forward. And of course, as always, please let us know if you run into a product or a recipe that you're having trouble determining, or if there are particular aspects of determining ounce equivalents that you're still having difficulty with, and we'll be more than happy to help. You can find links to all of the USDA ounce equivalents resources that I covered today on the resources page of our main CACFP website, under the heading using ounce equivalents. In that same place, you'll also find meal pattern charts and portion menus that show serving sizes and ounce equivalents, as well as links to standardized recipes that show serving sizes in ounce equivalents. Of course, you can always go to USDA's website and find links to download ounce equivalents resources, as well as request copies in print. Thank you all for joining me today. Again, if you have any questions about ounce equivalents, please reach out to us and of course, we're happy to help. Thanks so much, have a great day.